Hello, Holy Wiremite here. Welcome to tutorial 16 in the G Lua Pro series, where we're going to be taking a look at an introduction to hooks. Let's go to the wiki, and you notice we have hooks open already. In the last tutorial, I went over an object oriented programming, I went over all these classes, and I briefly discussed what they were. Now, before we proceed with any more class information, I'd like to give you the basic understanding of hooks. So, we're going to start with GM, which is for game mode, and we're going to go specific hook for initialize. Now, before I continue, notice that there's different colors next to the hooks. So we have client side hooks, which are yellow. We have blue server hooks. We have server and client side. So those are going to be shared with the yellow blue. And also we have green, which is for game. Now let's go to initialize and notice that there are no arguments for initialize and that it's called after the game mode loads and starts. So the general definition of a hook is an instance or event which occurs in a game thus triggering the functions that are tied to the hook so we have in this instance the initialize hook being called after the game mode loads and starts thus any functions that are tied to this initialize hook will be called as a result so let's demonstrate this so let's first go here and we have two different methods of using hooks first we can actually override the original hook so if there were any kind of initialize hook in the base game mode and it had any lines of code as such we'd be overriding that and replacing it with what's in here so we're going to say no more default init hook and it of course being shorthand for initialize and the second method we can do is we can actually define a function. So let's make a local function called init soup. It's going to have the same number of arguments as specified in the wiki for the related hook. So if there are any arguments here, you would give the same number here and they'd be the same exact uh, types of arguments and everything. You can use that in your function as well. And we're going to be printing in the beginning, there was soup. And then we'll give some kind of indicator for our client side console, not just soup, the start of our hooks, you know, I have to throw in soup in there. And then let's create a second function to show that you can actually tie multiple functions to the same hook. So let's go here and we'll say, and soup was good. All right, so that is the beginning of soup. So let's go in the hook library called the add function. And from here, we're going to specify the hook that we're adding on to. Then we're going to give a unique name for this hook. So we'll say unique hook name number one. And then we'll say init underscore soup. And that's going to be the name of the function which we are tying to the initialized hook. And then we're just going to do that. Instead of one, we're going to be putting two and soup two. And there we go. So now we have everything set up. So let's save. And you notice that nothing happens in the console. And that's because, remember, this is called when the game mode is starting up and loading. So I'm going to restart the server really quick. Okay, the server's been restarted. And now you can see, I'm going to kind of scroll to the top. We have our dotted line. And then we have, and soup was good. In the beginning, there was soup. And there's the hooks thing. So this is important. There's the order of event which is going on here. So we have the hook additions or the tack-ons, I guess you can call them, before the actual definition of the hook itself or the definement of the hook itself. So this proceeds here when loading up hooks. And that's important to notice for future reference. Now let's say that we want to actually get all the hooks that we have available. So we can do that and we simply use hook get table. So this is going to return every single hook and every single function that's signed to all those hooks. And specifically in this case, we want to look at initialize. So we're going to put the key value initialize. And there we go. We have every single hook assigned to initialize. Now, let's say that we want to remove the hook that we just created. Well, we can do that just as well. So we're going to be specifying initialize as the first argument. And for the second argument, we're going to have the unique hook identifier. So here we have unique hook name two. And when I save that, notice that unique hook name two is now gone from the console at the bottom. So it's successfully been removed. There are two more things you can do from the hook library. The first one is going to be run. So we're going to have hook run. And then we'll say, we don't really need much of any of this anymore. We're going to run from initialize with any arguments. Remember, initialize doesn't have any arguments with it, so we can just put an empty table. Otherwise, you'd have a table full of the arguments which you'd be putting in. So there we go. We're running our hooks, and now you can see our hooks are run at the bottom, and soup was good. In the beginning, there was soup. No more default in it hook. All right, so that's that. So lastly, I'd like to note that you can actually print 
our return different values from here. So if one of these hooks actually returned anything, so let's just put return true, it would return true. Now it can only return up to six different values. So that's just important to note. And likewise, you can do the same thing with call. However, don't really recommend you use call. Hook.call internally calls hook.run. So hook.call is something you don't really need to do. Pretty much what it does is it runs through all the hooks until something returns true and then it stops. And then, I mean, it's pretty much all there is to it. So I really recommend that you just use hook.run instead. So anyway, that's gonna conclude everything about hooks that you really need to know before we can start progressing to entities and all these other different topics that I'm really excited to get to. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave so in the comments section below. And if you like the material, feel free to like, subscribe, share, and bell. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to check out Hexane Networks for affordable and high-performance server hosting. That's Hexane Networks, whose link is in the description below.